As Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says that the passing of the Rwanda bill is not just a step forward, but a fundamental change in the global equation on migration. Interesting words. The policy should be given royal assent over the next few days. And the PM says this should mean that flights will take off within 10 to 12 weeks. The Home Secretary, meanwhile, says it's a landmark moment to stop the votes. The Act will prevent people abusing the law by using false human rights claims to block removals. And it makes clear that the UK Parliament is sovereign, giving government the power to reject interim blocking measures imposed by European courts. I promised to do what was necessary to clear the path for the first flight. That's what we have done. Well, let's discuss this now with former Labour advisor John McTernan, as well as the deputy editor of Spike Online, Fraser Myers. Good morning, both of you. Good morning. John, let's start with you. What's your take on these latest developments and do you think that the plan has got legs? Uh, it's shameful. It shouldn't have been passed <clears throat> and it won't work. But the most important thing is it's wrong. It's morally wrong. We should not uh, be saying to refugees if you come to Britain... They're not all refugees, John. You know they're not. But we refugees have a will be... we, have, we have a process for dealing with that. We don't have you going, they're not a refugee. We have a whole process... It Isn't takes that far the problem, too, though, mate? Take, there well, is take, no, no processing. Take, take, well, it takes far too long to decide. Yeah. Um, but 80% of people who apply for asylum and refugee status in Britain receive asylum. 80% of those 170,000 people are, are, are legal, are refugees, is uh, what you're saying. They, they, they will get approved, yes. And, will they? And nearly 100% of all of the people who've arrived since January will be given an amnesty and a lifestyle. I'm government. not in any way, by the way, John, a supporter of Rwanda. What I get angry about mm -hmm. is that we are not, as a country, able to create a processing system... I agree with that. ..that, that can fast. say fair, fast, fast and, fair. and fair. I'm I'm into that, Fraser, and I, cause I, and I know I say it the whole time, but I... If you are a refugee, fine, but you are... But the pe in this country, everybody gets stuck. They're all the same. No, there are legal migrants and illegal migrants. There are refugees we should look after. There are people taking the mickey. And the biggest problem with this is, which we only just found... Well, I only found out an hour ago, is not only can the people... They have to be in detention centres for the, for the authorities to be able to then deport them. Yep. And they can only be invited to a detention centre because that would be against their human rights. Here's my other great thing. The Rwandans who have been given millions of pounds have already sold off the buildings, suppose, for the migrants because they didn't think it was going to happen. It's a joke, Fraser Myers. Come on, man. Yeah, I, th I think the scheme is, you know, the problem is, uh, I mean, I feel sorry for the Prime Minister in the sense that it's been dragged through the courts um, for two years. There's been the ping pong in the House of Lords. There have been so many um, obstacles that are, you know, outside, that are anti democratic. I'm do you, are you do feel House sorry for Commons... a Prime Minister who staked his entire political career on something that is fundamentally wrong? No, no, Lord. sorry. I feel sorry for him in that sense that it's been delayed. But his problem is that he has essentially staked his reputation mm. on a scheme that isn't going to work, that barely scratches the surface of the dysfunctions in the asylum system, as, as you've both just been alluded to. You know, there are thousands of people on asylum waiting lists, some of them waiting more than two years. I mean, the fact is that even if we do find that people are not allowed to be here, we struggle to deport them. Even those who commit serious crimes are often allowed to stay mm. in the UK. So clearly there are much bigger problems with the system. And Rishi Sunak has essentially said that he seems to think that the symbolism of the first flights setting off is enough to deal with this problem. I don't think it is. No. John, what do you make of uh, James Cleverley's comments there that the latest iteration of the Rwanda mm. bill will stop false human rights claims? What does he mean by that? Well, the problem is it stops human rights claims. And it cannot be right that there are people in our country who don't have access to human rights and there are people who have. Either we all have human rights or none of us have human rights. And he, what he's saying is none of the people, after this law, law has been passed, this bill has been given royal assent, no, nobody who comes here can claim the protection of UK human rights. Well, that's actually not what this country stands for. It's actually not what the monarchy stands for. It's I not think, what Parliament I think, stands for. I think that's really the, the issue, isn't it, John? And it's all about... We were talking about this yesterday and we've been talking about it loads. It's how things are explained and defined. Like I just said about 
I think the minute we talk about migration, mm. one side says, but they're all refugees, the other side says, they're all illegal migrants, right? Well, John's the not difference saying they're about all refugees, but, just the, no, the no, majority no, no, no. Are. But the majority are. It is, but the human rights issue, absolutely agree with you. So you've also got to acknowledge that there are people, and I blame society, the government, I blame our systems, that are taking advantage of immigration laws, are taking advantage of mental health excuses, are making, taking advantage of human rights, either committing crimes and staying here or blatantly playing the system. Now, the system's wrong, but the system has too many damn loopholes. You'd have to admit that. No, I don't think the system does have loopholes. The system is just one of delay and delay and delay. And well, that's, hope, a, that's a loophole, uh, isn't it? Well, it's not a loophole. It's, a, it, it's, it, it's, it's not a bug. It's actually a part of the system. It would tell me, go to England, because they won't be able to sort it out. That's no, I, I think... I think, pe I think people sort of know now, or many, you know, aspiring migrants know now that, that the country has become a bit of a soft touch. Now, that's not to say... We shouldn't, you know, caricature this. We shouldn't say that everyone is let in and no-one ever gets sent home. You know, we shouldn't over overstate it, but there have been so many egregious cases of people who really have no right to be but here, who ma managed to remain here anyway. If the Prime Minister wants to stop the boats, he'd be better off nationalising the Cathlon. Um, the reason that people cross... Uh, the channel is they can buy boats easily. Um, but you'd also have to accept the reason that they, I mean, nobody has ever been able to answer this because they look at me like yeah. I've landed from Mars. If I was a refugee yeah. or an illegal migrant and I was offered a tent on a beach in Calais or a four star hotel in the United Kingdom, I don't care who you are or what your argument, I'd come here. So the thing Wouldn't is, I? I'd come here. No, the thing is, people come here because this is the greatest country in the world. I not anymore, not, though, is it? Oh, it Hey, it's St thing... George's Day. I won't have that lack of patriotism <laughs> on our show. But look at what look at look at our country and look what has happened to many parts we have, of our country. Look, we have the potential. Great word. to come back to be the greatest country in the world. The only thing holding us back is this incredibly terrible government. I'd go further, and you and Nick might not like this, but I think that one of the things that's holding us back is that we don't look after our own. Well, and I think the British people are fed up with that. Well, I think people are fed up with the fact the NHS is broken and it's been broken by the deliberate actions of our government. Um, and I think we do have to look at what could our country be if we were all brought together, not divided. And I just find this bill part of a whole politics, yeah. which is about setting people against each other. I don't think we'll make anything better by being against each other. And Fraser, your deputy editor of Spiked Online, I think it's fair to say that Spike covers a whole range of different views and opinions and perspectives. Do you find that people are quite united when it comes to Rwanda, though, in the condemnation of it? Um, not necessarily of what it's trying to stop, but the way in which it's being implemented? I think, I think it's a bit of a mi mixed picture. I mean, you see, actually, a lot of public opinion is, is broadly in favour of it, or at least... I really? think the, pr the problem is that every, lots of people agree on the goal and people understand that Britain has lost control of its borders. Um, and then I think some people are sim become more sympathetic to it because of the way that it's been blocked through the House of Lords, through the courts and things like that. I think people see that the, the problem of, uh, you know, the sort of anti-democratic urge behind that. Um, but the actual scheme itself, I think, you know, lots of people see that it is problematic. Do you think that we're seeing the same rhetoric now with the Rwanda bill as we saw with Brexit? And <laughs> Brexit got finally went through and then when it did it was well it's not the brexit we wanted and so all the issues that yeah. happened with brexit i think that were predicted anyway people ended up saying well it's because it was not the proper brexit are we just going to see it well it's not a proper rwanda i think i think that i think that sunak and co want to revive that kind of sense of you know the public versus the elites think but i don't any think difference, i don't though. think there's the same buy-in for rwanda as there let's is talk about the optics let, let, let's not talk about uh, trying to sort a problem for a minute let's talk about a man who as i say i don't think he's done a good job at all uh, but uh, who's staked his political career if there's one left on Rwanda. Do you think it's going to make any difference at all? Is there going to be any bounce at all? Well, I think he's promised to stop the boats. He, uh, you know, so maybe Rwanda might possible, reduce, the, reduce the boats. It's not going to do boats. that. And, and, yeah. and, and with you respect, know, we all imagine that the Labour Party is, is going to be the next government, and that's just factually, if you look yeah. at the polls, we'll have to wait and see. What would your party do differently, John? Because with respect, the only thing I've heard from, from Keir Starmer is he's going to process people in France. No, um, the other thing, Keir Starmer is, is a prosecutor. Keir Starmer has prosecuted, investigated, um, organised crime. Keir's got him, he, symbolically, he went to The Hague, he met with Europol. The point is, he's a prime minister, will be a prime minister, 
who is happy to cooperate with the whole of Europe on this one. You have to smash the gangs. You don't smash the gangs by passing a law. You smash the gangs by infiltrating them, by bugging them, by following them. It's the, it's the process of proper policing. And if you smash the gangs, then you smash the infrastructure. It just is one of those subjects that's not going to go away. I don't think... I mean, I, I, I agree with Nick. I think people want the problem dealt with. I just don't think most people can look at this and go... I mean, that news this morning that the millions that we've spent on accommodation to the Rwandans has already been sold off by the Rwandans because they didn't think anybody was coming. And I mean, were, what and, the hell are we talking and about? They can't, and they say they won't have any flights until after, at least till after the general election. That they're having in the, they're, they're definitely having theirs in the summer. We're not having ours in the summer. Nick's going to give me a dirty look. I've got to do this. I've got <laughs> ten seconds. If you were the advice in the Labour Party today, would you tell Angela Rayner to give her secrets out as soon as possible because it's dragging her down, isn't it? No, I tell I tell Angela Rayner to come out and mock this pathetic policy. Interesting. He managed to get Angela Rayner in somehow. He just crowbarred in his Johnny, and Johnny Johnny and me go back a while. Thanks, son. Thank you so much, former Labour advisor John McTernan and Fraser Myers from Spike. Thank you both.